Hello everyone once again from the dystopian monarchy of the United Kingdom. Now on Saturday, two momentous things happened in this country. Charles was officially crowned king and at like the exact same time, I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which actually means that sadly, now I am the king of England and I'm only gonna be king of England. Don't worry, we're giving away all the Connollys, Scotland, you don't have to be part of us anymore. Because I think I'm going to do something differently as the king of BreadTube UK. No, but seriously, thanks so much for the support. It means so much hitting 100,000 subscribers. Can't really believe it, to be honest. It's such like an enormous amount. I can't even really think of it in my head. But it's been amazing doing this full time for like the last two years. And let's just see where the channel goes, I guess. And also... Sorry, I haven't been updating the chocolate orange stuff. Every 5k, I usually get a new chocolate orange because I went away for seven months. I didn't update it. I think we need five more. Maybe I'll do that. And also, there probably will be like a special 100k video at the weekend, so stay tuned for that. But 100k doesn't really stop the grind. And today, we are talking about Conservapedia. Now, some of you guys might think, haven't you already done like three videos on this this year? I have done videos on Conservapedia. But I didn't actually focus on the politics. I mainly focused on their takes on entertainment. So I did a video about Conservapedia's views of supposed conservative video games, which included like very left-wing games like Metal Gear Solid, supposed conservative movies. Apparently Judge Dredd was on there. And then we finished with TV shows. And you guys can go watch those videos. They were a lot of fun to make and just like totally insane like the worldview of conservapedia but today i just want to talk about the political views of conservapedia and its political i guess coverage of various figures like calling joe biden a marxist leninist and stuff so what i thought would be fun today is we're just going to go through a bit about the background of conservapedia and then just contrast how they describe cultural things political figures versus how they describe like conservative ones and i thought it'd be fun for a video to do today but before we go any further please like the video and let me know like how long have you been aware of conservapedia i only found out about it this year but apparently it's been a you know a thing for like over a decade nearly two decades so let me know also follow me on social media at the cavernacle on twitter also on instagram instagram is where i posted all about my travels and that is all archived on my highlight reels on my profile page. So go check that out. Also consider becoming a patron, trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. There is some exclusive content on there. I am launching the podcast at the weekend and half of that will just be for patrons. And also you get access to the Discord server and my Switch friend code. So consider becoming a patron and also check out my second channel where the podcast will usually go up and check out my subreddit down in the description. But you guys probably love Wikipedia. If you're a student, you probably use it all the time to at least find some good sources. Maybe you're doing other things with it, which probably your university wouldn't like, but I've always liked Wikipedia. I love going down Wikipedia rabbit holes. It was founded by a libertarian guy, but I've always found it to be pretty fair, even though, of course, it does have certain biases, which just everything's going to have, but at least even in terms of maybe communism i think it gives it a fair shake it has whole articles about anti-communism anti-communist propaganda like the black book of communism which is honestly pretty commendable for something that does have a libertarian leaning and i guess wikipedia is just like the best of the internet isn't it, it like is a vast resource for knowledge it's volunteers doing it in their spare time working on all these edits and helping to like educate people because if you just want the broad strokes which i often like when i'm reading about history or something it's an absolutely great resource and you can spend hours just reading it and like i said although there are some problems with it which i could probably make a whole video on i think most people would agree wikipedia is like an absolutely great resource and although everything's gonna have a bias i wouldn't really call wikipedia's bias left wing unless we go through the you know the funny saying that facts have a left wing bias because that is how i guess conservapedia is viewing things that Anything that goes against conservative narratives must actually be biased, not that it's informed by the fact. So let's start by reading Wikipedia's 
summary of Conservapedia. So Conservapedia is an English language wiki based online encyclopedia written from a self described American conservative and fundamentalist Christian point of view. The website was established in 2006 by American homeschool teacher and attorney Andrew Schlafly, which is a really annoying thing to pronounce, son of conservative activist Phyllis Schlafly, and she was really, really famous in the conservative movement, to counter what he perceived as a liberal bias in Wikipedia. And then his mum was an American attorney, conservative activist, author, and anti-feminist spokesperson for the National Conservative Movement. She held paleoconservative social views and political views opposed to feminism and gay rights, and successfully campaigned against the ratification for the Equal Rights Amendment to the US Constitution. So moving on to her son, Andrew, the founder of Conservapedia. So he's a graduate from Harvard Law School in the same class as future US President Barack Obama, which is pretty amazing. He was also the editor of the Harvard Law Review. He ran as a Republican for the United States House of Representatives seat of Virginia's 11th Congressional District in 1992, coming in last place in a field of five candidates in the primary. Laffley created the wiki-based Conservapedia in November 2006 to counter what he perceived as a liberal bias present in Wikipedia. He felt the need to start the project after reading a student's assignment written using common era dating notation rather than the Anno Domini system that he preferred. Although he was an early Wikipedia enthusiast, as reported by the Congressional Quarterly, Schlafly became concerned about a perceived bias after Wikipedia editors repeatedly undid his edits to the article about the 2005 Kansas Evolution hearings. Schlafly expressed hope that Conservapedia would become a general resource for American educators and a counterpoint to the liberal bias that he perceived in Wikipedia. I'm guessing the edits to his edits about evolution were just, I don't know, stating the facts from a guy who describes Conservapedia as a Christian, like, fundamentalist website. Now, what I thought would be fun is we've read Wikipedia's summary on Andrew and Conservapedia. So let's read Conservapedia's summary of what Wikipedia is. So this is on Conservapedia. Wikipedia is an online wiki-based encyclopedia hosted and owned by the non-profit organization Wikimedia Foundation and financially supported by grants from left-leaning foundations plus an aggressive annual online fundraising drives. Most of Wikipedia's articles can be edited publicly by both registered and anonymous editors, mostly consisting of teenagers and the unemployed. As such, it tends to project a liberal and in some cases socialist and communist worldview, which is totally at odds with conservative reality and rationality. What is conservative reality? Like the belief the world is 5,000 years old or something? Like I've never heard that term before. So just at the bottom, it also says, critics of Wikipedia state that Wikipedia's articles contain systemic bias and that the information included within its articles are a mixture of truths, half-truths, and falsehoods. It's also used to discredit conservative politicians and organizations. The nature of Wikipedia also makes it subject to spin and bias, examples of which include paid public relations advocacy and inserting libelous content into the biographies of politicians for political purpose. So libelous content into conservative politicians' biographies, I'm guessing. So you're going to enjoy the rigorous fact-checking and lack of bias you're going to find on Conservapedia's own biographies of left-wing and liberal politicians because you'd think with their criticism of Wikipedia of being communist-run, just completely controlled by basement-dwelling unemployed people and teenagers who are all communists, I'm sure we're going to find conservative reality in Conservapedia. So what I thought we'd do first is just kind of try and paint you their worldview. So Conservapedia, you're thinking they will be pro all conservatism. They'll be pro all Republicans and stuff, but no, it's not. It's not like some moderate conservative website. Andrew's mother actually endorsed Donald Trump before she died, and you're probably guessing it actually is a Trumpist conservative website because it is really hard line. So if you have someone like Mitt Romney, let's go on Mitt Romney's Conservapedia entry, who shouldn't be, but in the climate of American politics right now, seems to be a more moderate Republican, and it says... 
Mitt Romney is an establishment globalist, neocon, Reno, American politician. He is an anti-Christian bigot, a member of Conservative Inc., and a pathological liar. Romney has been observed to not hold any values, instead being an opportunist who takes whatever political position suits him best at the moment. Thus, with good reason, Conservatives see Romney's core beliefs as similar to that of a globalist Democrat that he claims to oppose. So that doesn't really sound very facts-based. It just seems someone who supports Donald Trump very mad that Romney voted to impeach Trump and doesn't like Donald Trump. That doesn't seem like a good fact-based entry because it's saying he has no political views. He has no political positions. Even though he is more moderate and you could compare him to maybe like right-wing Democrats, I wouldn't say Mitt Romney is like a conventional Democrat. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. But even if you have people like Dave Rubin, who's of course conservative grifter, Conservapedia is of course extremely homophobic. So it says about Dave Rubin, Rubin considers himself a member of the intellectual dark web and has been described as part of an online alternative influence network that promotes right-wing politics. Though this is inaccurate as he likely leads viewers to become less conservative, his promotion of homosexuality and socially liberal lifestyles. And then it goes on to say, in 2022, Ruben and his husband, David Janet, announced that they would be surrogating two children, depriving them of their mothers and from a real family. Ruben was met from encouragement from mainstream conservatives and Conservative Inc., showing their full abandonment of family values that they claim to support. While facing harsh criticism from authentic conservatives such as Mark Dice, who put out a video dissenting on the mainstream right, telling support of the degenerate move. In the video, Dice also states that Dave Rubin has done very well for himself, being Republicans' favourite token gay guy. I mean, I guess this is reflective of conservative reality. I mean, that last line about Mark Dice wasn't completely wrong, that Dave Rubin is conservatives' favourite token gay. He was just a complete grifter and only did it for money. But you can see there, like, their worldview is, like, really traditionalist conservative, but also very Trumpist. And they don't like anyone who kind of is out of lockstep with the Trump version of the Republican Party, which probably isn't surprising considering who this guy is and who his mother was. But maybe because he's from a time of before Trump, you might think he might be a more traditional Republican. But let's move on to a few more like cultural things. So I got a couple articles about cancel culture, capitalism and safe spaces. And the safe space one is funny considering what conservapedia is. So Cancel culture is the banning of individuals from employment and social status based on their race, ethnicity, ideology, or simple opinions. It originated in Germany in the 1930s. It is a radical left extremist idea. The term describes a phenomenon related to political correctness wherein one is cancelled for being of the wrong race or saying or doing something allegedly immoral, bigoted, insensitive, or purposely offensive, or being politically incorrect. Going on to talk about Maoist ratification, according to Rebel News, which is a really legitimate source, modern cancel culture was directly inspired by Communist China's Cultural Revolution. Maoists instituted a national cancel culture campaign that banned books, demolished statues, erased history, destroyed culture and cultural norms in a re-education campaign that replaced traditional Chinese culture with Maoist slogans. Rectification is aimed at purging society of the centers of left-wing communist and atheist totalitarian rule and purifying society for a future socialist order to rectify is to make right imaginary crimes of capitalists and beneficiaries of so-called white privilege, self-criticism and confession is forced either through torture or public shaming. It's just amazing these guys' problem with Wikipedia, and this is the stuff you read. Cancel culture is not only targeting people based on race and ethnicity, which I've never heard of before, even when conservatives talk about cancel culture. I guess, do they mean like white people in this instance? It's actually a Maoist plot in America, inspired by the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s in China. Like... How crazy do you have to be to believe Maoists are leading anything in America? Like, communism in America is so, like, is such a minority, and Maoism is probably, like, so minuscule in the terms of people who make up it. How can you believe that cancel culture is being driven by Maoism? Like, I just don't understand. Do conservatives actually think this? And it's just amazing to me because, of course, you know, some conservatives just say crazy stuff but also loads of conservatives do believe in absolutely insane stuff. So there you go. Cancel culture is actually Chinese cultural revolution coming to America in, in the 2020s 
to target white people. Like, <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. This complains about Wikipedia being biased. Like, conservative reality is just a rejection of reality. So on capitalism, thanks to capitalism, billions of people have been able to pull themselves out of poverty. Capitalism has led to the greatest reduction in human misery. Press X to doubt. As capitalism provides more opportunities to people, as research has shown that when people earn their way out of poverty, it is much more empowering and enduring than being supported by the government. I trust that research 1000%. I'm sure it's from a very reliable source. But just one I wanted to read as well, because conservopedia is in essence like the embodiment of a safe space but on their article on safe spaces safe spaces are areas where leftists are shielded from criticism trigger warnings are notifications that the subject matter of a content one is about to consume may offend them leftists have been widely criticized for implementing safe spaces which exist mainly on university campuses however some republicans generally never trumpers support the idea of some safe spaces atheists have been major proponents of safe spaces and trigger warnings along with the lgbtq community so said without irony um safe spaces are the invention of the atheist and leftist community because they don't want any dissenting views from the website which was literally created as a conservative safe space for conservative reality where they don't want dissenting views not only that they don't even want all conservative views they just want trump supporter views so they're talking about safe spaces i've never even seen a left-wing safe space as walled off as something like conservopedia so now i want to like compare and contrast their very factual coverage of democrats versus republican politicians and see what they say about them because, you know, we all expect a very high degree of accuracy and factual reporting from Conservapedia. So let's go to Republicans' favourite, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and let's see what they have to say about her political views. And I think let's contrast them to Marjorie Taylor Greene, because I guess they're kind of two sides of the same coin in that. I guess Marjorie Taylor Greene is enemy number one for the Democrats, where Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is enemy number one for the Republicans. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC has been criticized for her heavy use of Marxist cliches and racist comments about token blacks. In 2018, she led a group of insurrectionists in a takeover of Nancy Pelosi's office in the Capitol building. This little paragraph is very factual. Ocasio-Cortez is a personification of the failures of the American public school system. She has also been accused of being a, a serious embarrassment to any sensible person under the age of 30. She is an outspoken advocate for open borders and the public dole for illegal aliens. On the subject of AOC's racism, a black man approached AOC, indicating he'd like his picture taken with her. She was all smiles and eager to oblige when he claimed to have driven an hour to see her and pose for a picture with him. When the black man informed her that he was a journalist with Project Veritas, the words barely escaped his lips when she jumped back and her handlers swooped in. So the really, really racist AOC, clearly in that instance, after smiling and taking a photo with this unidentified black man, as I say, she then backed away when he said he was working with Project Veritas, but apparently she hates black people because she only backed away when she heard he worked for project veritas like what kind of like logic is this but you'll see this a lot they accuse left-wing politicians of being like the most crazy bigoted and racist people ever but when it comes to someone like marjorie taylor green they don't say anything bad about her despite the fact she is probably she is probably up there for the most visible racist anti-semites and bigots in congress like absolutely insane person right here like a lot of the stuff written on conservapedia could be written by marjorie taylor green i made whole videos on this pointing out conservative hypocrisy just like doesn't work but maybe pointing out conservative insanity does work because here's probably my favorite one it's about joe biden so listen to how they describe joe biden and of course i hate joe biden as well like a million criticisms you can level at him like absolutely useless president like really racist pretty right wing and all that um i wouldn't really criticize him for any of these made up things so um joseph biden political beliefs so listen to this socialism with chinese characteristics communism xi jinping thought 
Marxism, liberalism, white supremacy. I probably wouldn't disagree with the last one. So Joseph Robinette Joe Biden Jr. aka Pops the big guy and my chairman is the authoritarian kleptocrat and dictator of the United States. 79% of Americans believed the 2020 election was unjustly manipulated by dishonest whitewashing of the Biden family's criminal activities, the official position of the Biden regime, as articulated by its chief's press spokesperson, is that political opposition is a threat to democracy. He seized power and occupied the White House in January 2021. Biden is the self-appointed leader of a second new world order rebranded the liberal world order after the disastrous failure of globalization and the first new world order who was the head of the first one his removal from the white house for high crimes or his mental incapacity is regularly discussed by members of congress the media foreign leaders and the public only 24 percent of democrats in his own party support his re-election and while that might be true i don't think that's because he subscribes to xi jinping thoughts and is the leader of a second new world order. But yeah, absolutely unhinged, mentioning the Biden crime family. Joe Biden is really corrupt, and I don't disagree with that. Uh, but calling it the Biden crime family is interesting when they don't say anything bad about Donald Trump and his financial dealings. I, I was going to read that passage. I decided I'm not even going to bother. It's just like praising Donald Trump for everything. You can just clearly see how conservative brainwashing works. Is that oh, corruption is bad, Biden crime family is bad, but Donald Trump crime family is good. So if you go through like various Democratic politicians like Obama or Nancy Pelosi, keeps calling them like radical Marxist, class warfare, and like all funders of Antifa and like really unhinged stuff like that. But basically I made a video a couple weeks ago talking about how American conservatism is just fundamentally a far right ideology. It isn't really traditionally conservative in, in many ways, although traditional conservatism often does ally itself with the far right. So um, I thought we'd spend the next couple of articles looking at stuff that is basically promoting fascism. And that is what these pages are doing. So from talking about George Soros and cultural Marxism to saying uh, Francisco Franco, the dictator of Spain, actually wasn't that bad, to be honest. So let's have a look at this. So uh, cultural Marxism, which is the far right conspiracy that Jordan Peterson obviously has mainstreamed again, uh, is a branch of Marxist ideology formulated by the Frankfurt School, which had its origins in the early part of the 20th century. It comprises much of the foundation of political correctness and wokeism, and it emerged as a response of European Marxist intellectuals disillusioned by the early political failures of conventional economic Marxist ideology. Uh, the central idea of cultural Marxism is to soften up and prepare Western civilization for economic Marxism after a gradual, relentless, sustained attack on every institution of Western culture, including schools, literature, art, film, the Judeo-Christian worldview, tradition, family and marriage, sexual mores, national sovereignty. The attacks are usually framed in Marxist terms as a class struggle between oppressors and oppressed. The members of the latter class allegedly include women, minorities, gay people and adherents of non-Western ideologies like Islam. Cultural Marxism has been described as the cultural branch of globalism. Nothing anti-Semitic about any of this stuff. While Marx's com Communist Manifesto focused on the class struggle between the bourgeois and pro proletariat, he did address culture, intimated would change after his economic vision was implemented. Patrick Buchanan argues that cultural Marxism succeeded where Marx failed. Marxism has permeated the American left. If you're curious about how this strictly relates to far right ideologies, that second paragraph just reads like something out of uh, a Goebbels speech about Judeo Bolshevism. So if you're curious, maybe look that up. I have talked about it before. It sounds pretty similar about the Marxist attack on the family, but here's where it talks about it even more. The entire left wing denies that cultural Marxism exists, dismissing it as a far right conspiracy theory and calling the entire topic a hoax, okay? And it does acknowledge that this conspiracy theory is anti-Semitic, so perhaps the most common method of rebuttal is to accuse those who acknowledge cultural Marxism's existence of being anti-Semitic. This arises from the tendency of a small minority on the far right to highlight the fact 
small minority doing a lot of work there, that many of the Frankfurt School's members were Jewish. The issue with the Frankfurt School is that they are Marxist, their race, religion, or ethnicity is irrelevant, the overwhelming majority of those who know cultural Marxism exists share this view, and furthermore, don't rely on finding out if people responsible for creating and spreading it were Jews either. Indeed, cultural Marxism's existence doesn't rely on any connection to Jewish conspiracy theories. So it has no relation to traditional conspiracy theories about Jewish communists that go back to the 1930s in Germany, where Judeo-Bolshevism is insanely similar to cultural Marxism. The only difference is you have some sort of plausible deniability by saying, we're just focusing on the Marxism here. Just ignore that our target is the Frankfurt School. Jewish Marxists who fled German persecution based on the conspiracy theory that is insanely similar to the one you're pushing and saying, like, it's not racist at all. It's not racist at all. And, you know, if the left say it, they're just trying to deflect because most of us, we don't care. We don't care where they're from. We just hate those uh, Jewish Marxists. And on that note, people who often talk about globalists and Marxists in this context are usually talking about Jewish people because we have a nice other conspiracy theory pushed on Conservapedia, and that is uh, George Soros, the big boogeyman of conservative politics. So um, George Soros is a big-time anti-Zionist, anti-Israel, and even anti-Semitic, atheist, international oligarch, and con artist who bankrolled presidential campaigns of Barack Obama and other left-wing causes. Soros' organisation, the Open Society Foundation, is responsible for financing Postmodernist neo Marxist organizations for his personal gain. As Snopes noted, it devotes 2.6 billion to advance left wing SJW priorities, which in reality promote feminism and Islam together. It sounds weird. Um, and gay rights. He's attacked Jews, falsely claiming they cause anti Semitism, even though he is a Jew. And this is the same page which is saying George Soros is an anti Semite, but promotes cultural Marxism, and as we're going to get on to, says Francisco Franco wasn't so bad. Soros has been described as a psychopath psychopath. Soros has been a major player in the European migrant crisis, having donated half a billion dollars for the transport and resettlement of six million illegal Muslim aliens in Europe rather than Saudi Arabia or the Gulf states. So obviously a common tactic of conservatives, even on like mainstream conservative sites like Fox News, is basically to say everything that happens that they don't like is funded by Soros. I don't know if you guys remember about the migrant caravan crisis in the US, but they were saying it was all funded by Soros. Like, Soros created this crisis on the border to help Democrats win, and in the more, like, horrible white nationalist talking points about Tucker Carlson, he's doing it to replace white Americans with migrants who rely on handouts and just will vote Democrat or something. Like, this is just the crazed anti-Semitism, which is just inherent in American conservatism, while they think anyone who criticizes Israel is an actual anti-Semite. But cultural Marxism isn't anti-Semitic. Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't either. But AOC is, and Franco wasn't as well. So let's get into this for the last entry. Like, an actual fascist dictator of Europe... This is how they cover him. So ideology, while often said to be a fascist, and despite adopting certain elements of fascism during his rule, his ideology differed from fascism in several ways. Fascism has the revolutionary aim to transform society, not all the time, while Franco's rule was rather conservative and traditional. The main elements of his rule are said to be national conservatism, authoritarianism, anti-Freemasonry, anti-communism, a strong promotion of Roman Catholicism, and support of the family. So I guess the Conservatives, Franco seems like a pretty good guy. Just how I get, like, people telling me how great Pinochet was. They basically would love Franco. They'd love Franco being traditionalist, being a proponent of the Catholic Church, being anti-communist. That's what these guys care about the most. So, like I said, American conservatism is fundamentally anti-Semitic. Who helped Franco in the Civil War? like, the German military, so apparently there's nothing to say about Franco not liking Jews, apparently there's nothing to say about Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, Republicans, or anything, but it's all Democrats, it's all Democrats, while Conservapedia pushes anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, like, it's so insane how their understanding of all these issues is just so warped, like, imagine growing up in this environment, and that's why I don't feel sympathy for conservatives, but there's just no hope for some of them, do you know what I mean, like, if you grow up in that environment, and 
you're surrounded by people who believe this stuff. Not only surrounded by people, every bit of media you consume is basically this. Like, although this seems more extreme, kind of, because we're reading it out loud, let's not pretend anything I read today isn't something Fox News says, isn't something The Daily Wire says, isn't something the mainstream Republican Party say, because although Conservapedia is funny to laugh at, what it reflects is a far-right conservative worldview that, like, tens of millions of Americans are brainwashed into. And I know some of you will be in the comments and you'll tell me, like, you might have broken out of it, but so many Americans will just never break out of this way of thinking. And it's so terrible because the worldview, I feel like, isn't even one you can necessarily rescue someone from because it's just so incoherent. Like, how do you deprogram, like, all that insanity, really? Because... It's just so contradictory in every way of, like, actual reality. Like I said, conservative reality. And I guess it's just maddening how, like, absolutely insane these people are. Like, they're so detached from actual reality, they need to create their own Wikipedia clone just to keep spreading this ideology and this propaganda, which you will hear 24-7 on conservative radio and conservative news. And it's just such a rejection of reality propped up by, like, billionaires, propped up by millionaires and the elite. You just feel like sometimes the world is so hopeless because there's going to be people even in the comment section of this video that are telling me like those articles are right about Joe Biden subscribing to Xi Jinping thoughts or, you know, the real racist being the Democrats and cultural Marxism isn't racist and Marjorie Taylor Greene is fine, but it's, you know, AOC, she hates black people because she doesn't want to talk to Project Veritas. Anyway. That is it for this video. If you want more coverage of Conservapedia, go back and have a look at uh, the other videos I did. I probably showed them at the start of the video. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.